21-year-old Katie Walker from Stockport loves a flutter. So much so that she works nights as a croupier in a casino. But the biggest gamble Katie takes is with her health. She's addicted to diet cola. I probably drink about three litres of it a day. And she bulks this up with a diet of stodgy white bread. Fruit and veg terrify her. Just put it on your lips. Helping her to change her freaky food habits will be the job of our experts. Psychologist Felix Economakis will force her to face the music. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, to this maximum fear, where would you rate yourself right now? Probably about 9. Yeah. While nutritionist Charlotte Watts struggles to get her off cola and onto healthier foods. Oh, he <laughs> came back. That's horrible. But with only four weeks to transform Katie's diet... Oh, it's spitting at me. ..will Charlotte and Felix be up to their toughest challenge yet? Oh, try and be a bit more positive. I'm having my doubts about Katie's level of commitment. <laughs> At this rate, I'm not that confident she's going to do it. Twenty-one-year-old Katie Walker is an adventure seeker with a taste for extreme sports. I would say I'm quite an adrenaline junkie. I have bungee jumped, skydived, anything where there's a bit of danger. I just love it. She's brave, she's full of courage, she's so confident. She's fearless in most areas of her life, except for when it comes to food. I'm scared of experiencing anything new when it comes to eating or drinking. I don't really like the idea of, of trying anything that I don't consider to be safe. And her list of safe foods is extremely limited. My meal most days will be bread in some form, like toast, crisp butties, ketchup. Do the whole bread with ketchup on now and again. Sweets, chocolate, anything fun and childlike. And she washes it all down with a daily deluge of Diet Cola. I drink Diet Coke from getting, getting up first thing in the morning till when I go to bed. Um, don't drink anything else at all. And panic sets in when she's without her fizzy friend. Wherever I am, there's usually some Diet Coke around. I usually sort of carry one round with me, just in case, you know. When pressured to try new foods, it's always the same old story. She says she doesn't like something even before she's put it in her mouth. And she, she will... She'll gag, really, if you try to... Or she'll touch you with her tongue and then... Ugh. No, I like it. You can't even get on your tongue. It's squidged. It's it. your lips. It is difficult to understand for other people, but I can't physically do it, and, you know, it is too stressful for me, and I would rather just avoid the situation completely. Katie grew up in Stockport and is the youngest of three children. We definitely did spoil her a bit because she was the youngest, because she was the girl, you know, and she was really cute. Her fussy eating started early. We bribe her, we threaten her, we'd do just about anything to get her to eat the right things. But then in the end, and probably the end wasn't a very long time, it became easier just to think, well, at least we're getting something something down, at least she's eating something. And there was always tears and tantrums at mealtimes, so I thought, well, the easier option would be to stay calm because she's going to grow out of this. But unfortunately, she never has. Katie recently moved into her own flat, but her bizarre eating habits still affect her family. Meal times can be stressful because we've got to make sure that it's it's comfortable for Katie. There doesn't seem to be anything on here that is remotely normal. We can't just have the meals that we want without having to consider, you know, kind of molly coddling Katie. Patience is starting to wear thin. I think it's becoming less less tolerable for everybody else now because it was always okay when I was 15 and oh she doesn't want that she'll have this. But now it's a bit more like, you're 21, just try it. And Katie's white bread and three-litre-a-day habit has also started to take its toll on her health. I've had a couple of occasions where I've had like stomach pains and ended up in hospital and it's been undiagnosed. And obviously I get to thinking about that and thinking, well, it's probably something to do with all the crap I put in there. But 21 years of freaky eating won't be easy to change. I think you're going to have a real ball on your hands fixing Katie. I think... Uh... The real hard part will be convincing her to stay that way. If it was anything else other than food, I'd say 
yes, she'll overcome this, she'll do it. With it being food, it's a whole different ball game. I feel like it's now or never really, because I've waited long enough and now I'm at the point where if I could change it now, I never have to look back. Starting today, Katie will have just four weeks to revolutionise her diet. And she's in London for her first meeting with nutritionist Charlotte and psychologist Felix. Hello, Katie. Hey. Hello, I'm Charlotte, this is Felix. Hi, Katie. Nice Good to meet you. Hi. How are you feeling? A bit nervous, but uh, excited to see what's going to happen. OK, don't worry, we're going to take good care of you. OK. OK, well, come this way. OK. OK, Katie, so the next couple of weeks are going to be a tough challenge for you, changing your dietary habits. Felix and I have put something together for you to use as a motivational tool in the next couple of weeks. We're going to leave you to watch that now, and then we'll come back after and have a chat to you about it, OK? OK. All right. Good luck, Katie. <laughs> Thanks. Kate, just here to wish you luck and to tell you to get a grip and, and start eating food. You need to fix this. It, it's a big problem, and on the level, I'm not entirely sure I believe you can do it, but, but I, yeah, if you can, please prove me wrong. Hiya, chicken. Uh, do this thing for me. You know, let, let's, let's get it over with, let's get past it. If it helps, you ditch the Diet Coke, and I'll ditch chocolate, how's that? Because you know how important chocolate is to me, but I'll manage without that as long as you'll manage without uh, Diet Coke. You can do this because you're gutsy and you're awesome. Hi, Katie. Um... First of all, I'd like to say how pleased I am that you're finally doing something about your eating problems. It's you that's decided to do something about it and you're doing it for you. We all love you and we all want you to be healthy. And the way you are at the moment, it's going to cause you serious health problems in the future. So stick with this, please. Katie, what was it like for you to listen to your friends and family? It wasn't very nice, to be honest, just because a lot of those things haven't really been said before. It's upset me to, to hear them say that kind of stuff, so be should be a good motivator to try and focus on how happy they all will probably be, you know, if I actually do manage to do it. And make yourself happy as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's important. Don't yeah. forget that. OK, let's go make a start, then. Felix and Charlotte begin their work with something to shock Katie into action. <laughs> yeah. So, Katie, we've looked at your diet mm. and we're quite astonished to see that you are living on a diet of mainly diet cola and white bread. Mm. So, what do you think this here represents? I would go for, like, maybe how much I've drank in my life. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> it's like a load. Well, you drink three litres of Diet Cola a day. So this is 1,095 litres, which is the amount you drink in one year alone. Wow. It's a lot, and it, it looks really, like, black. This is a huge amount of chemicals for your body to process. This is really, really serious stuff. Katie eats over 1,000 bread rolls and over 1,500 slices of white bread a year. But that's not all. What a lot of people don't realise about white bread is how much sugar it contains. And we have this to show you. If you come over here, Katie. A slice of white processed bread contains a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, so Katie consumes well over the recommended daily allowance. Ready? Just to show you, this is all going into your body. Now, sugar in this form mm. is not something your body needs. Mm. And it will just give you a really big spike, surge of energy, mm. and then you get those drops. D I'm just shocked for now, because I didn't... I thought bread might have a bit of something in it that wasn't yeah. great, but I didn't even think it had sugar in it, really. Obviously, to move you from this type of food to a more healthy way of eating mm. is going to take a lot of work from you. Yeah. We're going to need a lot of commitment. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Excellent. Let's get to work. OK. Over the next four weeks, Charlotte and Felix will work with Katie to transform her dire diet. I think Katie's particular problem here is a very large challenge. I think there's a lot of addictive qualities to the type of diet that she's having, um, and she has a lot of emotional attachment to those as well. The bread was the worst thing to see and to smell, because... 
smell absolutely disgusting. You know, seeing it all laid out, it's just, you know, it just makes me realise how big the problem is, really. But old habits are hard to break. Back at the hotel, a tired Katie finds comfort in a pack of sugary sweets. I think I'm feeling quite emotionally drained today, just because I think it's all sort of got quite serious now and it's all probably got a bit much and I'm sort of ready for the next few days to be over with, I think. <laughs> Charlotte's keen to find out if Katie's shocking diet has done any damage to her health, so she's brought her to a London clinic for blood tests. Hi, Hi Katie. Hey, how are you feeling this morning? Katie's diet is truly awful, and I really don't think that she understands the extent to which the chemicals in the diet cola and the bread are really affecting her health. I'm hoping that today the session with Dr Pixie is really going to galvanise her, motivate her into changing her dietary habits. <laughs> Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a particular interest in eating disorders. She has analysed Katie's test results and has some concerning news. The most worrying thing for me was that your liver function was abnormal. Do you know anything about your liver? Do you know what it does? Um, I know if you give it too much like alcohol, it fails and doesn't work properly. Everyone thinks that, oh, it's just alcohol, but actually the liver has so many jobs to do. And in that cola, you've got all those E numbers, you've got the citric acid, phosphoric acid, and you're giving it excessive amounts. The liver is one of the largest organs. It protects the body from poisoning by filtering the toxins that go through it. Katie's liver is being forced to work much harder than it should due to her large cola consumption. Chemical sweeteners and phosphoric acid consumed in large quantities are hard for the liver to break down. Overworked liver cells become saturated and this can lead to cirrhosis of the liver, which is potentially deadly. Because you're drinking so much cola, what you forget is that there's caffeine in that and that's dehydrating you. You're like someone who's in a permanently hungover state. Mm. Your liver is up, you're dehydrated, mm. you're wrecked. It's not brilliant to obviously find out that these things have come up already that mm. Uh, just through this diet. The other worry that I have, your fertility, because caffeine will adversely affect your fertility. And also when you do fall pregnant, your risk of miscarriage is increased. And I think the other worry in terms of the amount of cola that you're consuming is your teeth, actually. Would that be a reason that maybe you might stop for pure vanity reasons if your teeth looks like this? Not the right way around. God. I mean, I'd hope that my teeth would never get that bad because obviously I keep brushing them. You can be sure that you, the early stages of this are happening in your mouth. It's obviously another sort of thing to push me on, really. With a lot on her plate, Katie heads back to Stockport to break the news to her mum and dad. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Katie's just missed you. Have you? I missed you. Was there anything that was a worry or that, that we need to know about? From my blood tests, they, they discovered that my liver's not working as it should do. I can't believe somebody so young could, uh, could be starting with liver problems. Mm. They're saying about not being able to conceive children. That must have scared you. Yeah, that was that the bit that got me. You. That's got to make you want to give up if you think it's going to affect your fertility. Yeah, yeah. That was the one thing they said where it was like, and I didn't really say much after that. I just kind of sat there, like... Before Felix can begin his work, he wants to uncover what lies at the root of Katie's eating problems. Katie, what's your understanding of, of what's going on here with these eating and drinking habits? I can't remember when it sort of first became a problem. I can just remember never really being interested at all in food. You know, sort of being offered things and just thinking, well, no, I don't like that because I've not had it before. It's not safe. It's not what I'm used to. You know, it's either I don't like the look of it, the smell of it, just there's something about nearly everything that I just think I just don't like it. What I'd like you to tell me a little bit more about is think back in the past to a really typical 
scenario around the dinner table? Mum would make the dinner. We'd all stay out of the kitchen. She'd usually have made different meals. Right. Like, she'd make me something separate. I don't really remember that much drama about it, to be honest. Okay. I can remember the odd times when it was, you know, sit there and eat that. I would have just, you know, plainly refused and, and sat there and cried about it. And mm -hmm. if, if I didn't want to eat something, I wasn't going to. But you said that if they did pressurise you, you, you'd cry quite easily and then they'd yeah. back off? So it sounds like your parents' strategy was to not nag you, but actually what it did in your case is just allow you to keep doing the same behaviour. Let's just put aside the diet and the eating for a moment and tell me who you are as a person. My best friend would probably say that I'm quite confident. Um, I've got a bit of a dare inside. So you're a real daredevil? Yeah, with most things. Most I'll things. sort of try anything, but just not food-related. Okay. What specifically prevents you from trying new foods? I've got all the good intention of doing it, and I get it up to my mouth, and then it's like I can't physically do it. And it's just embarrassing to sort of have everybody thinking mm. that um you know, acting like a child or... I just think people will just think I'm a bit stupid. OK. Now, this sounds a little bit odd, but what's the problem with people thinking you're a little bit stupid? I don't want people to think I'm stupid. <laughs> well, I know this sounds a bit odd, I'm going to ask you again. Because if they did think you're a little bit stupid, what would that mean to you? Um, it would upset me that, you know, friends and family and things and people, you know, have that opinion of me. I would rather everybody just think I was fine and normal and just see the sort of mm -hmm. happier side of me all the time. With Katie, her problems seem to be twofold. To avoid tantrums, her parents never really pushed her, so her eating patterns have been maintained into adulthood. Then there's her fear of looking stupid when trying new foods, and this is also blocking her progress and definitely something I'd like to explore with her further. Back at her hotel, Katie's had some time to reflect as well. I think after speaking with Felix, I've realised that maybe I shouldn't put quite as much emphasis on being ashamed of the problem, because I think I honestly could have got the problem sorted out a long time ago if, instead of being ashamed of it and denying it for so long, if I would have actually recognised that it was a problem. <laughs> Katie has her first one-on-one -on -one appointment with nutritionist Charlotte to start the process of getting her to eat healthier foods. Before I start my work with Katie, I need to see where her boundaries lie, how far I can push her with new foods. I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of resistance on her part. Now, what's your first reaction looking at um, this spread here? There's a lot of green things around here. That's the stuff that's kind of catching my eye, and then the tomatoes over there. I'm just trying not to look at them. Of all the foods that you can see in front of you, which looks least problematic to you? The bread that's over there doesn't look too bad. Are you prepared to go step up and have the one that's less processed? It just doesn't look nice at all. I think, yes, let's try it. So what are your first impressions? It's just, like, full of seeds. That stuff you have to chew is... The stuff that's good for your liver. Mm. Don't like that bit. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> that was horrible. In what way? It's like. Ugh. I think this is the bit that you have to learn to do. This is the bit you're not used to. And at the moment, it's just unfamiliar. Next up, those essential greens that are so desperately lacking in her diet. Stick it in. The whole thing? Oh, yeah, just, just stick it oh. in. Go on. What are you thinking? Stop thinking. Right. No! <laughs> oh, no, nearly. <laughs> it goes a little bit further each time. <laughs> so I would swallow it without chewing it, maybe. I just don't want to chew it. Oh, I'm afraid you and that leaf need to become friends. <laughs> Commit to your leaf. Right. Ugh. <laughs> oh, the leaf came back. That's horrible. 
So what, what was horrible about that? It's just like, the more I chewed it, the more it tasted like, I don't know, what is it, cabbage? Yes. Yeah. It tasted like cabbage? Yeah. My God, cabbage tastes like cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if veg is a struggle, then maybe fruit will tempt her sweet tooth. Quite bitter mm. and sour. It's actually a very, very sweet fruit. Mm. I would have liked that one very much. OK. I feel that's one that you might like in the future. I've just got a feeling. For over 10 years, Katie has drunk nothing but Diet Cola. So Charlotte has to find her a healthy replacement and fast. Apple juice. <laughs> that smells stronger than I thought it would. Don't like that very much. Let's try... I'm going to go for... I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> oh, oh, it smells like bleach. That's grapefruit. Yeah, I don't like that one. <laughs> I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cranberry drink. That's right, actually. Excellent. Okay, that's really good. She surprised me in the fact that, that she actually put a lot of stuff in her mouth. There were no tears and no tantrums, but it might be a very different scenario when she's at home alone. What I feel she needs to do is keep pushing the boundaries and just keep going, then I think she's got a really, really good chance of changing. I used to sit there for long enough that people would just give up, and I kind of thought at first that she might give up, because she might get bored of telling me to eat it. The only way out of it was to sort of just eat something to shut her up. <laughs> Charlotte and Felix have set Katie the challenge of eating a healthy meal in just four weeks' time. To get Katie started, Charlotte sends her off with a homework hamper filled with unfamiliar foods and tasks for the week ahead. Reduce your daily intake of Diet Cola from three litres a day to two litres a day only. No white bread at all. Replace your white bread with healthier alternatives. Oh, no. This looks awful. And Charlotte has also asked Katie to ditch all her sugary kiddie treats. Not really enjoying this, to be honest. It's, uh, it's like throwing all my food away, <laughs> and it's just a waste. Katie's lack of enthusiasm doesn't go unnoticed. Try and be a bit more positive, please. I can't, because I'm throwing away all the food that I eat, and I don't yet like any of the new food, so you know, I'm going to starve. And with Mum around, it's not long before Katie reverts to her childlike ways. I just don't see how I can eat any of this. Like, everybody goes away and leaves me with a house full of this food. Yeah. And I'm hungry, and it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? Or just randomly cut up an onion and some broccoli and put it on a pan and try to eat it. I don't you like know, cooking. And you've I never can't cooked, do it. that's why. If you give it a try, you might like it. Seems like so much effort when you could just spend and three pounds buying something. Do you not think it's worth it? Yeah, but I just think it's just easier. To carry on drinking Diet Cola and chocolate and crisps and biscuits and feeling unhealthy and being unhealthy. You don't think it's worth it? I just think if I'm going to spend like an hour a day cooking food just to sit on the settee while I'm watching telly and just eat like a bowl of soup on my own. Like, oh, this is fun, and then wash up. Once you get into a routine of doing it, It'll just become normal. It'll just become a way of life that when you come in, you'll you'll get what you've got in the cupboard and start cooking it instead of grabbing a bag of crisps. Come on, positive. Think positive thoughts. And later that night, things still don't get any easier for Katie. At the moment, I've got a house full of vegetables. <laughs> and I don't really like any vegetables, and I don't know how to make them, and I'm not in the mood. And I've got a splitting headache. It's like here, and it's killing. So, I mean, the easy thing to do now would be to go get a big bottle of Coke, sit and watch TV for a bit and chill out, and, you know, enjoy myself, but then I'm back to square one, I'm back to where I was.
It's the start of week two. Katie's managed to cut down on the cola, but she's still struggling to eat new foods. Felix has asked her to meet him at a local youth centre for their next session. Katie needs to be pushed out of her comfort zone to face her fears of looking stupid, as she calls it, when trying new foods. Now, Bollywood dancing is something totally foreign to her and probably quite frightening. So I've got just the challenge in mind to give her the push she needs. Hi, Katie. Hi. Nice to see you again. By facing her fears of embarrassment, she may realise that trying something as simple as fruit or veg is not as scary as she thinks it is. That's brilliant. OK. Here we have... Today, what we're actually going to have you do is learn to do some Bollywood dancing. And it's probably something you've never done before, which is the whole point of it. If you would have said ballet or something, I don't know what that was. OK, no, it's, it's Bollywood. OK, so let's get set up. Right then. So your hands are here. You go one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, Casey's clearly three, embarrassed. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, but she's not about to suffer on her own. Five, six, are you doing, doing it with us? <laughs> you want me to? I think you should. Oh, OK, let's do it. <laughs> Katie, that is awesome. Well done. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you feeling good? Yeah, it's getting easier as I go on. And just when she thinks the end is in sight, oh, Felix okay. steps up the embarrassment oh, factor. We're going to take this one stage further. Which is we're actually going to perform this in front of some people. Like real people? <laughs> yeah, kind of real people. Not experts in Bollywood, just people who are there to experience and have a laugh and to really enjoy the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you OK? Yeah. You up for it? Well done. <laughs> well done, Casey. That's brilliant. So it's out of the frying pan and into the fire as Katie makes her Bollywood debut in the middle of her local shopping centre. How are you feeling right now? Um, I'm not loving it, to be honest. I'd be surprised if you were. Uh, I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, to his maximum fear, where would you rate yourself right now? Probably about 9. A 9, OK. The aim of today is for you to focus on the dance and being with it and let these people go by, you know? They'll probably, like, get into it and stuff. It's going to be great. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. People in Katie's position focus on what everyone else is thinking and how they're judging them and forget to think about their own feelings. So the aim of today was to get her to focus on the experience and just forget everyone else around her, which would like her to apply to her diet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Katie, Katie, Katie. <laughs> Well done, well done. You're brilliant. This was new. Didn't like it, but you did it. And we want to apply that learning to do with trying new things in the diet, for example. Yeah? Before you come across them, you probably think, no way, that's not for me. It's not part of my reality. Then you try them, you think, OK, I didn't enjoy it the first time around, but now I'm OK with it. Yeah. I'm feeling better now it's over and done with. I'm glad I've done it. It was just a bit scary, the idea of, you know, someone I know seeing me. Just don't want to look stupid. With the morning session over, Felix goes to meet Hello. Katie's Hello. mum. Hi, Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi nice to meet you. Hello, nice Felix. Well. He's keen to see what she'll make of Katie's Bollywood bravado. Thank you, Katie. What have they done with you, sweetheart? Have <laughs> <laughs> you noticed something different about Katie? I do. <laughs> That's called a, a bindi, I believe. And I've got some bangles. I take yeah. it we've been doing a bit of dancing, have we? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like, Bollywood-type dancing. How do you know this? Well, cos just... I can just tell. <laughs> yeah. And? Guess where? The precinct. Not Stockport precinct. <laughs> they didn't take you to Stockport precinct. No. <laughs> OK. Were you on your own? No, there was two professionals doing <laughs> <laughs> it. Did you see anybody you know? I saw one person who I've seen him work a few times. But... Okay. 
Was it horrible while you were doing it? Yeah, like I couldn't look up because I just thought there was going to be people stood staring at me and laughing. How do you think you might have reacted if you saw Katie there in some obvious distress? She would be looking down with people around her. What do you think you might have done? Worried about her. She'd have probably looked really young and vulnerable again. I'd have taken you off, wouldn't I? I can't understand what that's got to do with just picking up a piece of food and putting it in your mouth and not liking the taste of it. Katie's lesson is to stick through it and realise it. It's not going to be as bad as I thought it would be. All right. And while she's experiencing that, everybody has to allow her that experience. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Katie's mum was very concerned about who saw you at the centre and what was going on. And in some ways, she's teaching Katie what to be afraid of. So what's important for us as psychologists is to let people know that the best way sometimes to help a person is actually to help them stand the distress, get through it, and realise that they can do that time and time again afterwards. It's halfway through Katie's four-week challenge and she's still struggling with her new diet. But she has managed to reduce her diet cola intake by 14 litres a week and replace it with juice and water. Trouble is, caffeine withdrawal has really kicked in. I'm not feeling very well today, so I've had a day off. I woke up at about four this morning, feeling really sick and hot and cold. And and like I've had this headache for a couple of days and I think that's just, you know, not as much caffeine and, and stuff and I'm just basically feeling like rubbish. Finding it hard to cope, Katie temporarily moves to her parents' house and into the loving arms of Mum. Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, Mum. But given her history of molly coddling, could this be a big step in the wrong direction? Yes, yeah, she's struggling. She perhaps thought it was going to be a lot easier than it is. It's hard to wrap your mind around how instead of having Diet Cola drinks and crisps and bread, you've suddenly got a lot of root vegetables and she's, she's struggling wrapping her mind around that. And, yeah, she perhaps needs to put a bit more effort into reading her homework and the tasks that she's been given. If she maybe gave a bit more to that, she possibly would do better. Katie's energy levels have dropped dramatically and she's finding it harder than ever to motivate herself. But it's not just caffeine withdrawal she's suffering from. What neither Katie nor anyone else knew at this moment was that she was, in fact, pregnant. <laughs> Seeing Katie so low is too much for Mum Susan. Right. So she perks her up with a fix of bread. I was supposed to do a couple of tasks last week, but I've not been doing any of them. Just been in bed and sleeping. So we have fallen behind a bit, and that's why we're trying to get a lot done over the next few days now. I'm feeling a little bit better. Charlotte decides the only way to engage Katie is to make food fun. So she's devised a session that will challenge her in a way she usually enjoys. I think Katie's really struggling. She has cut down the Diet Cola, but she's not actually eating much, and she really needs to put some variety into her diet. Now, I know she loves gambling, so I want to use that to move her on a bit. Hello, have a seat. How have you been getting on with your new diet? I've managed to cut things out. I just haven't managed to replace them with anything yet. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a, bit, a bit hungry and grumpy, but... Oh, we're here to help you with that today. OK. Um, we know you love gambling, so this is your environment. OK. So you're going to bet on either red or black. If you oh, lose, God. then I get to choose what you eat. Oh, no, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I never win. No more bets now. Thank you. Seven red. Oh, it's me. <laughs> I'm going to go for a little bit of that one. With her luck out, she's forced to try her bet rouge, a tomato. That's just gross. OK. Ugh, I just hate tomato. You're not going to give up, are you? No. <laughs> quick. Okay, OK, OK, OK. Quick. Uh, bite, 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 bite. Oh. Uh. <laughs> chew, 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 
Look at me too. Just look at me too. Look at me too. Uh, it just doesn't taste nice. Okay, move on from that. Oh, man. Place your bets, please. Hey. Oh, black. Again, Katie loses, and this time she's faced with a cucumber. You need to do half of it. I can't eat half of that in one go. How like, are we gonna get? How are we gonna get you to a meal if we can't get you to half of one of those? I can eat a normal person mouthful. <laughs> half a bite of those is a normal is a normal person mouthful. Yeah, but you wouldn't just shove that much food in your mouth. Yeah, you, you would. Know what it was. Oh yeah, you would. People do. Chew, 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 chew. Tongue, tongue, tongue. Relax your face. Look at me. So you're not used to that texture. But it's not doing anything bad to you, is it? What is it doing that's bad to you? <laughs> what is it what's it doing that's bad to you? It just doesn't, it's just making my mouth upset. How is it making your mouth upset? Because my mouth doesn't like it. There were quite a few points throughout that where I just thought, just eat it, just put it in your mouth and just eat it. And not because I was being non-sympathetic. You know, I can really see the difference when someone's truly not having a good time and just making it a bit for the sake of a battle. It's the penultimate week of Katie's dietary makeover. With her commitment to change now seriously in question and still unaware that she's also pregnant, Charlotte and Felix meet up for a coffee bar case conference. All right. Okay, I just wanted to have a quick catch up really because I've had quite a frustrating time with Katie. We did this game with roulette, which is supposed to be mm. fun, which is supposed to engage with her love of gambling. Yeah. And she was still doing all the making faces and being mm. going back to the kind of little girl thing. You know, if you're not cooperating and engaging, it makes the job ten times harder. Yeah. I've got to come up with some way of holding up a mirror to her behaviour mm. so she realises that she's acting a bit like a child. We know she's moved back home, right. which means that she's been sucked back into that yeah. environment where she doesn't have to look after herself as an adult. Mum's always diving in to rescue Katie from yeah. any kind of duress. I think I need to go and see the mum. Yeah. I think I need to see them together. Mm. Hi, Katie. Hey, you're right. Nice to see you again. Felix has asked Katie to meet him at a local nursery for their next session. What I hope to do today is for Katie to have an experience of working with children and realise that she's a bit like a child herself with her behaviours. And if she can see that in their behaviour, she realises, I'm doing that too, and I kind of need to grow up a bit. It's lunchtime and a room full of hungry three-year-olds need feeding. The class teacher shows Katie the ropes. Trotty will be coming in here with all the meals and plates. So what, what, what I want you to do is give out the cutlery to the children. And then um, it's always a good thing to eat with the children because we encourage healthy eating and good eating. What's wrong with it? We'll just put it there for a minute. OK, I'll have it. You have no fork. Then you'll be able to eat your dinner. Katie's normally the one resisting at meal times, but she'll have to be the adult in this situation. What's wrong with this fork? Why don't you like it? Don't you just try it? I like it. If you get a spoon and a knife, then you can have that fork, yeah? But you don't need your spoon until you've got your dinner, do you, really? No. It'll be OK. An adult Katie is coping, but can she keep it up when lunch is served? Whoa, that's a ginormous plate of food. Food arrives and the children tuck in, but someone isn't eating. How are you doing, Katie? Fine. But they've asked you why you're not eating your food. What did you say? I am. I'm just... It's too hot. It's up to you, I would rather just help them eat theirs. And then not have them necessarily notice. <laughs> Well, they do notice yeah. this thing. Don't. Yeah. I mean, they don't want to set like a bad example. But... It's about trying to override that instinctive resistance. Are you too? No one can do it for you, but you. 
You're doing good. Eating all yeah. You can yeah. eat mine as well if you want. Yeah, is it nice? Mm -hmm. Do you want to eat all mine? Do you like it? <laughs> Katie's struggle to eat is even greater than a three-year-old's, which is frustrating for the class teacher. This is well, because they see that you're not eating. So you've got to try and eat something. But see, um, Samit's a little bit reluctant to eat his food, so if you show him that you're eating it, it's nice. Then, and that way you're encouraging him, so he might eat. Eat, baby. Look, Katie's got to have some dinner. It's very nice to meet, so please eat your dinner, baby. <laughs> well, if you eat some first, and then he can see you eat it, and then he may be encouraged to eat. Can you eat some food for me? There was just some plain rice, there was some other vegetables. She could have had a bite and grinned and bared it out, but, uh, but she didn't. So that's disappointing because I felt she could have tried harder with that. At this stage of our work together, to be frank, I'm having my doubts about Katie's level of commitment. And this doesn't bode well for therapy. You need somebody who's really willing to give it their all to try the things that are suggested to them. If they're not interested in trying, that's always going to cause a problem. With little dietary improvement in sight, Charlotte makes a visit to Susan, Katie's mum. Hiya. Hi, Mom. Come in. She suspects Hello. Katie's temporary move back home into the loving arms of mum may be hindering her progress. Katie's been pretty terrible at doing any of her homework. Part of the problem is that her mum just steps in any time that Katie finds something difficult or uncomfortable, which means Katie doesn't really have to go through any struggle on her own at all. Her mum, Susan, is going to have to learn to let go, step back, and really let Katie find her own way. The fact that potentially together you want to be able to enjoy meals has to be an end point. You know, you've got to truly believe you can, and you will, be eating and food that's good for you. So in terms of how you can help Katie, ultimately you have to step back and do what I'm doing, which is go, her health is going to suffer if she doesn't eat this. So it's that important that even if she goes through a bit of trauma to do it, she has to stand on her own feet, two feet to do that. Okay. I think Charlotte's got a point about my mum sort of backing down on me and I know that my mum will give in and I don't tend to try stuff when she tells me to, which is just me being horrible, I suppose, to my mum. But I kind of know that I can get away with it with her, so why not, if you can, and get away with it. Oh, instructions. With another hamper of goodies and tasks waiting, Charlotte is keen to see if Katie and her mum really get the point she was making. Time to vary the soup you make. Inside this hamper, we have provided you with ingredients and instructions on how to make a new soup. Chicken and vegetable soup. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the stuff that we need. OK. Carrot. But Mum Susan finds it hard to let Katie take the reins. Cut it up, wash it. Don't start on that. This is the start of it. But, but first we have to decide how much of everything there you need. We'll just go Break along. Break separately. You can't just start here and just do it as a No, you along. can't, because however many it says there, you take that out now and put that separately. It's you not butting in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> OK. OK, so have you ever touched raw chicken? No. I'd wash your hands first. Just watch your fingers. I'm watching my fingers. I'm nowhere near it. I'm stressed out now. She's in the kitchen. Sharp knives and <laughs> OK, I'll we'll use the other hand. No, 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 no Katie, no. that's small knife, she's, fine. She's just having her own little personal... I, I, I just thing over here. She just wants fine. to jump in and... Yeah, no, you use the You'll small knife. You'll do really, really yeah. well. Push, turn and push that button. I don't know what to do in the oven. Yeah. Still will help out with the pan. See, if you leave her, she works it out. OK, fair enough. Ah! Oh, it's bitten at me. Do you know when you're stirring it, just... just... Leave it sit for a minute on the heat so that it gets time to cook before you start to, to turn it gently. Yeah? That was nice. 
There's a big difference between showing someone what and to do helping. and the, yeah. It's so actually teaching her to do it rather okay. than doing it for her. If I thought she was in the house cooking like this, ah. I'd be so pleased and so proud of her. Her instinct, which she's obviously had strongly for you know, 21 years, is to jump in and help Katie at all times. But I think we saw progress and hopefully she can see the merits of getting past that. How's the chicken? Yeah. Yeah? What was that? I was quite surprised that she put it in her mouth and tried it and actually swallowed it. Charlotte was right when she said that I take over and I probably fuss about it too much and make too big a thing of it. Whereas she's an adult now. And as Charlotte said, she's got to do it for herself and she's got to just get on with it. There are just a few days left before Katie's final challenge. For this, she's decided that she'd like to cook a meal and eat it with her family. After four weeks of caffeine crashes and a resistance to change, Katie has started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. A couple of months ago, I was quite... You know, it was easy to upset me and I was easily grumpy and hyperactive and I just used to go from one extreme to the other really easy. And now, I think I'm a bit more emotionally stable. <laughs> I'm actually probably looking forward to my final challenge now because the actual idea of it before was quite scary because it was, you know, everybody might be looking at me and wanting me to eat these things and what if I don't manage it and what if it all was wrong in the kitchen and I was like genuinely quite worried about it but now I'm thinking of all good things that could happen. You know already she's she's reaching for other food now to fill in that gap. She's reaching for fruit, she's reaching for the yogurts, she's having the wholemeal bread. So she's already taken a huge step forward. I'm quite looking forward to my random, my random fruit salad. It looks almost as good as a really big chocolate bar. Although Katie isn't eating as many new foods as Felix and Charlotte might have liked, she has started to feel the physical benefits of lowering her cola and bread consumption. I actually weighed myself, and in the last four weeks or so, I've actually lost, like, nearly a stone. And, you know, I've not been starving, and I've been losing a few pounds here and there, and it's just mad because before, I was just eating, it was like I was never full up. But obviously it's food now, although it's, there's less of it and it's not quite as nice yet. You know, it does actually keep you going for longer. It's the day of the final challenge. For this, Katie's decided she'd like to prepare a special meal for her family. Oh my God. But has she progressed far enough over the last four weeks to be able to sit down with them and clear her plate? It will be nice that I think I'll feel like more of a grown-up because in the past, you know, I've had something different. But I think because all sitting down, I've something quite like grown-up, then that's a turning point then and saying goodbye to the way things used to be. Katie's been provided with the ingredients and recipes for a tomato soup and a chicken dish with vegetables. I have to say I'm a little bit nervous about sitting down to eat this meal because uh, Katie has never been the best cook in the world, but um, we're all going to give it a go. I'm waiting for it to stop attacking me with it. It's... it's been a surprise that she's decided to make a meal because she's never been interested in cooking. So I think it's been a real challenge for her to get in the kitchen and, and get stuck in, especially with fresh fruit and veg, you know, to get her hands in there and start making stuff. Yeah, that's... Uh, been a bit of a surprise. I think it's now going to be spicy onions. She's doing wedding, which is a stupid idea. Right. But forgetting Charlotte's words of advice, it's not long before Mum Susan takes the reins from a flustered Katie. I'll start chopping the vegetables for this. No, you need to make the soup. Oh, can't you do it? No. Can't. That's going to be ready in eight minutes to eat. That no, chicken meal. Warm. It just means in eight minutes it'll be ready. What's what's the next? Well, we best do the soup, haven't we? And put it in the blender. Careful, because it's going to be hot. I'd spoon it. As the pressure mounts in the kitchen, Katie takes a breather. Honestly, I honestly did not think it was going to be this hard, and I've been really looking forward to it. I could happily give up now and go home <laughs> and let my mum clean up all the mess. But this is the final challenge, and if I don't do this, 
then I've not passed my final challenge. Mum, Dad and Brother Ben are seated as Katie pulls herself together and serves the first course. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Well done. Cheers, Katie. Well done. Well cheers. Done. Hi, cheers. Mm. Yeah, it's good, that, Katie. Mm. This is really tasty, Katie. Very nice. Her family may like the soup, but it's Katie who has to eat it. Oh, Tried it without the bread, yeah? That's what you need, now. Do you like it, Katie? Oh, yeah. Don't know yet. Having a bit of bread? No. Sure, I'm sure I'm going to eat it for you now. It's very, um... Smart to it. <laughs> I'm not majorly liking the taste of it, to be honest, but... Oh, Katie, you've got to try some. Probably. I'm trying it. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. I'm doing the whole, I'm tasting it. You can try a spoonful. No. Well, try a spoonful at I least. Don't... Can you please not? I've had some. Right, got some help with the main course. Ooh, a bit short of space. Quite stunning that, that Katie's made that with her own fair hands. Yeah, it's really good. Would have been even better if she'd have eaten some. Mm. I think she's just not trying it properly, but still. Still all in her mind, I think that. Unfortunately, I'm a bit disappointed there. That uh, I am. I thought I thought she was going to eat that. Yeah, I thought she would. And I'm quite surprised she wouldn't try any more. But I think she's a bit hot and bothered after being in the kitchen. So maybe let her off a bit. But we'll see how she goes on with the main course. See if she eat a bit more of that. This is chicken. What kind of chicken? Made, made in a pot. <laughs> Thank you. That's what you get. This is it. This okay. Is it. All right, we'll dig in then. What do you think of that chicken that's cooked in a sauce? It's got a zing to it in a better way than the soup had. <laughs> okay. Like this, maybe that is just my taste buds or whatever. You wouldn't be frightened, would you, of ordering this in the restaurant now? No, it's really nice to see Kate getting stuck into a meal. Have you enjoyed it? I'm just... not going to lie and say I really like this, cos I don't, but at the same time, I tried the first mouthful and I thought, I don't really like that very much. But I've had 20 more mouthfuls since and each one's like a bit easier. Mm. And then I think if someone said, if you said next week are you cooking the exact same meal again, I'd probably eat 20% more than I ate today. It's been a really hard struggle for her, this. It's been a lot tougher than she thought it would be. And so tonight was, was a big thing for her. And she's probably proud of herself in some ways, but then probably a little bit let down that she didn't manage to eat more than she did. If she did what she did tonight so, in a restaurant, nobody, nobody would make, really Nobody would make any fuss but be, in that. Because that. everybody we're focusing on her tonight, it's been a bit more difficult. I think tonight it, it would have been great if she'd have polished off everything that was put in front of her, but I think the reality check for me there is that, that what she didn't do was run away. She didn't balk at anything. She didn't cry. Um, and she didn't upset anybody else or ruin the experience for anybody else. So the fact is, she's, she's trying things. There's been a lot of times when I felt like just giving up because it's not the easy thing to do. But I, have, I haven't done, and I am proud of the fact that I carried on. And I ate what I wanted to eat, but I could happily do that again, maybe a little bit more. And it, it is, you know, since the first time they actually got me to try something, it has just gone upwards since then, really. One month later, Katie's diet and health are still improving. She's told her parents about her pregnancy, but wants to set the record straight with Charlotte. Katie's asked me to come and see her. I'd be quite interested to see what it is that Katie wants to say, because at times she was quite difficult and even really kicking her heels back, and it seemed to be a bit of a battle of wills. And it was quite confusing to deal with, so I'm intrigued to find out what she's got to say. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Lovely to see you. How have you been then? I've been really good. I've. Um, I thought I'd get you up here to have a bit of a chat. Obviously, I see now. You know, I could have taken a bit more advice on board and sort of tried a bit harder. It was kind of a battle rather than feeling like I was working together with people, with you and Felix. You seem quite shut down at yeah. the time and 
become almost defensive. There was it, it seemed like you were almost saying what you wanted us to hear, kind of to make us go away a bit. I was, I was kind of feeling sickly all the time and really, really tired. And part of me thought, you know, if, if changing my diet for a healthier one, you know, is, yeah. is going to actually make me feel worse. And I, but I, th I did think I was going to feel better, yeah. but then I, I, I never did. But then um, another, you know, the reason I wanted to sort of bring you up here today and tell you is that uh, I actually found out just after finishing, well, just before um, my final challenge, yeah. that I'm actually expecting a baby. <laughs> You're joking. No. So all that time you were pregnant? Yes, the whole time. So obviously, this, all the symptoms that go along with being pregnant, yeah. the feeling sick and the sort of being a bit fed up and this, you know, all, all those things were happening. What timing? I mean, you know, sustaining a pregnancy and having a baby with the diet you were on would have been no. not a good idea, to say the least. <laughs> It's quite scary, actually. Oh, yeah, I've just managed to sort it out just in time. But I've actually had, like, you know, had my scan now and... <gasps> you got a picture? Yeah. <laughs> it's a dinky little picture. That was it. Wow. And when the baby is born, obviously, I've got a lot of work to do, making sure that baby eats better than I did. Oh, thank you, Katie. No problem. Though. It was lovely to see it's you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Wow, what a revelation. That explains so much about how she was feeling and about how she was reacting through the whole process. I'm really pleased for her, and I hope that she can make even more changes because it's such a crucial time for her and her baby. I wish her the best of luck.